Hello all and welcome to the Lucretia Report. I'm Ian and today, trains. Finally something a little lighter, right? I mean, Jesus Christ, these last few weeks have been rough. <laughs> I recently went from Tianjin, China to Beijing, China, two cities that are about 80 miles apart. And amazingly, I didn't have to step into a car or a plane and barely spent any money or time doing it. I walked to a subway station in Tianjin where I bought a ticket for 2 yuan, about 28 cents. I rode that to the train station. I bought a train ticket for within the same hour and I rode the train for 33 minutes. At the end of the line, I got off, walked to the entrance to the Beijing subway, and rode that to where I needed to be. So in a total of about an hour, and for 59 yuan, which is a little over $8, I traveled between two cities that are about the same distance as from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to Newark, New Jersey, and I didn't have to touch a car or a plane. If I were to actually travel between Philadelphia and Newark by train, buying a same-day ticket as I did in China, the cheapest Amtrak ticket would cost $66, and it would take an hour and 10 minutes, unlike the 33 minutes that it took in China. And how convenient for Philadelphia and Newark that they actually have public transportation that can take you to the train station. In most American cities, that doesn't exist. If there even is an Amtrak connection, you have to drive to the station anyway, so why not just drive the whole way? It shouldn't be underestimated how much of a benefit easy transportation between cities would be. I talked in a previous video about how America's love affair with cars is holding us back economically, and it extends beyond just the intra-city transportation that I talked about there. Having access to such fast, cheap, and reliable transportation between cities allows people to commute over long distances. That train I took in China, including subways and waits, halves the amount of time it takes to get to Beijing if you drove. And that assumes that you don't get caught in Beijing traffic. Not to mention that it's a lot easier to be productive or learn something or read a book or watch a movie or even take a nap if you're on a train than if you're driving. I personally know people who have lived in Tianjin and worked in Beijing, and millions of people do that because it's so easy. How many people do you know that live in Newark and work in Philadelphia? Access to transportation is the number one factor that determines whether somebody will be able to escape poverty. And right now, it's not something that's well provided for in America. Right now, people choose where they live, often based on where they work. You have to be able to get to work from your house. And if you work in an expensive housing market like New York or Boston or Los Angeles, right now you have to choose between either paying exorbitant rents or suffering through a long, grueling, unproductive, and unhealthy commute. Or, even worse, you're forced to take a job that maybe you're less suited to, or that pays less, or has worse benefits, because it's near where you live. None of that is a problem if there's a 100 mile radius that you can choose from and still be able to easily and cheaply commute. And the only way we can really do that is to bring our passenger railway network up to spec with those of China and France and Germany and Japan. Trains would also tie together rural parts of America far better than they are today. Take Laramie, Wyoming, for instance. A flight from Laramie's airport to Los Angeles can cost over $700 each way. Flights to or from small airports are always expensive. Because you have to have the same infrastructure, maintenance, security, air traffic control as big airports, and those costs are distributed over far fewer tickets. I know, I went to college in Vermont, and flights from Burlington International with its whole one terminal are expensive as hell. And in the case of Laramie, this is a town where the income per capita is only $27,000 per year, which means that if someone from Laramie wanted to go to Los Angeles, the round trip cost for the flights 
would be almost three weeks wages. The other option is to drive, which takes over 15 hours if you don't stop a single time. And then again on the way back. And for people in Laramie, those two bad options are the only options. But the train I rode from Tianjin to Beijing, it went 346 kilometers per hour, which means that it could make that trip in less than five hours. And for a whole lot less than $700. Rural trains don't need all the same things that rural airports do. So keeping costs for rural trains down is much easier. This is the airport in Burlington, Vermont. This is the train station in nearby Montpelier that I used to ride out of, a much smaller town. Which one of these do you think costs more money? Would this Laramie route be profitable? No. But neither are public schools, or social security, or the military. And there's no one saying that those things aren't worth it. China has proven that this can be done too. They have trains to remote cities in western China like Urumqi and Lhasa. Our current transportation network is just a tax on the most remote, poorest parts of America, which have to spend more money and more time to get anywhere. And none of that's to mention how much cleaner trains would be. Taking the train can produce up to 95% fewer emissions per passenger mile than flying. And flying is twice as efficient as driving. That means that for every 2.5 pounds of CO2 you produce taking the train, you would produce 100 pounds driving. Think about how many fewer emissions we would produce in America if fewer people drove or flew between cities and more people took the train. Not to mention that in many cases taking the train would be faster than flying. Planes take a lot longer than trains to get up to speed. And then you account for check-in and security and the fact that train stations are usually in the city near where you were going anyway. And airports are usually out in the boonies. All of this is why a massive high-speed rail network is part of a lot of people's plans to remedy both climate change and inequality, including the Green New Deal, a part of it that's been much maligned by Fox News. So Democrats' Green New Deal claim, and I'm quoting, high-speed rail would make planes obsolete. That is a claim in this case clearly shown to be highly unrealistic. Critics are calling this the train to nowhere, but at least it goes very fast. Correspondent William Lajeunesse looks at your tax dollars being wasted. This is a certifiable boondoggle. Billions will be spent on a train to nowhere ridden by no one. It's uh, just like giving Bernie Madoff another opportunity to invest your portfolio. Where half the residents can't even board the train because they're in prison. Presumably just because they hate progress in any form. The truth is though, that it's totally possible to do this. In just 10 years, China built almost 17,000 miles of high-speed rail. That's more than every other country in the world combined. And this is a country whose economy is comparable to that of the United States. Somewhere from smaller than to slightly larger than that of the United States, depending on how you count. It proves the point though that this is doable. The only thing that we're missing is the political will. The only reason we don't have this yet is because no one has put up enough of a fight. And as long as this remains a backburner issue, that's how it's going to stay. Which means that it's up to you to make this more of an issue. So talk about this. Care about this. Tell other people how important this is. Call your lawmakers and tell them that you want trains. Then call them again next week and remind them. Then call them again just to be sure. Make this important. Until then, I'll see you next time on The Lucretia Report. Six Simple Tyrannus. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that, give it a like. You can watch another video here and you can subscribe here and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I'll see you next time.